Section 7.8, Trends for Selected Nonmetals. First talk about hydrogen. Hydrogen is completely weird. It's in group one, but it's not it's not a metal, and it doesn't it doesn't act like the rest of the alkaline metals. In fact, it acts more like group seven. If you can think of it only needs one electron to have its whole shell full, just like a halogen does. So it behaves just like a non-metal. It behaves just like a like a group seven element. So for that reason, it's colorless diatomic gas, just like a lot of the other group seven are. Um, you can have hydrogen and non-metals to form uh, covalent bonds, just like other covalent or a uh, group seven uh, can do. Um, it's also possible that you can make turn it into an H negative. You can make a hydride. Um, any none of the other group one do that. So you can you can have it as a hydrogen ion, which is H plus, or you can have it as a hydride. It can actually gain an electron. So that's totally weird. Um, it basically has its own chemistry when it's talking about acids because it's H plus is acids. So it's it's just a completely unique critter and tremendously reactive. It reacts in uh, limitless ways. Um, so much of, much of uh, inorganic chemistry is dominated by the hydrogen. Next is group 6A. Group 6A is a little bit weird because if you remember the stair step starting at boron that goes down here and anything touching it is the metalloid. Well, above group, uh, the group 6A crosses that stair step. So oxygen is at the top, it's a gas, then you have sulfur underneath, which is a solid, all the others are solids, uh, you start getting into some metalloid character, and then once you get to polonium, polonium is a metal. So 6A is a little bit unusual. So one of the 6A uh, groups, the oxygen group, is um, oxygen, and oxygen has an allotrope. And we've talked about isotopes, which are different forms of um, the same atom with different numbers of neutrons. An allotrope is a different form of a, an element at a certain state. So, for instance, oxygen is gas. Well, ozone is a form of oxygen that's also a gas at room temperature. So there's two different possibilities. That's what an uh, allotrope is. So O2 is the normal oxygen. In fact, to make ozone is... Uh, very endothermic. It takes a lot of energy to do it. It doesn't happen very often, but it is pretty important uh, because it will uh, go, it's very light. It's lighter than oxygen and it will rise to the top of the, the atmosphere and actually shield, not light, but shield ultraviolet radiation, which, which helps skin cancer and things like that. God knew what he was doing. Oxygen's also so reactive that it it forms different types of ions. Uh, you have the normal O2 oxide. Most of the time you'll see it as O2. Occasionally you'll see peroxides. Peroxides is O2 negative 2. So it's a, it's a negative uh, anion that's an O2 molecule or uh, polyatomic ion. And it can join with group 1 elements. Very easy to make peroxides. So you can have hydrogen peroxide or sodium peroxide. You can also, with the upper, with the with the heavier group one elements, they even can make a superoxide, which is pretty cool. It's an O2, which is a negative one charge. So you could have something like potassium superoxide, which I just like the name of that. Another 6A element under oxygen is sulfur. And sulfur is is interesting because it's weaker. Um, it's a weaker oxidizer than than so it, it's it doesn't steal an electron as as much as oxygen can do. In fact, you can actually have a sulfur um, sulfur can be part of a compound that will burn an oxygen. So coal has sulfur in it. If you've ever seen a coal fire that's kind of yellow, billowy, white smoke, that's sulfur. The most stable form of sulfur, uh, and there's several different allotropes, is S8 which is kind of a crown, pretty awesome, cool, uh, where it's a ring. It's an eight-member ring um, of, uh, of sulfur. It's really pretty. I like that. Group 7A are called the halogens. And if you've ever seen a halogen light, like a bromine lamp or an iodine lamp, 
Um, they're very reactive, extremely reactive. They want, they have the highest uh, electron affinities. Chlorine, I think, is like 350. It'll give you 350 kilojoules uh, per mole of energy uh, just for an electron. It'll, you know, it's kingdom for an electron because it wants to be stable like uh, group 8. And so halogens form countless different um, uh, compounds. And they form salts. So, for instance, sodium chloride is a salt. Any of the salts that you would put on the, to melt ice and things like that, these are all salts from the halides. Group 8A are called the noble gases. And I think they're called noble with the idea that they've got their nose in the air and they don't react with anybody. They basically don't deal with anyone. They're stable. Uh, and in fact, they're not even compounds. They're single atoms. They don't even react with themselves like, like oxygen or nitrogen or hydrogen do. They are just totally normal. Uh, they're, they are stable as they can be. So they don't form a lot of compounds. There's only a handful of all the noble gases that form any compounds at all. Uh, you contrast that with one of the halogens or hydrogen, which would have pages and pages and pages of different compounds that it would make. So um, it has, the electron affinities are positive. You can't force an electron on it. You can't rip an electron. Its ionization energies are huge. You can't steal an electron from it. You can't force an electron on it. Um, they're basically just monoatomic gases. Just for funsies, um, there are a couple of different um, compounds that xenon can make. Um, xenon can be forced into the right conditions to make a fluoride compound. Um, and sometimes krypton can do that as well. And then there is one uh, synthesized compound of argon. I don't even know what you would call it. Uh, some kind of hydro uh, argon fluoride. I have no idea. Uh, that was just synthesized recently.